Yes, well, it's budget day tomorrow. The talk is housing, but are things going to change? Greenhouse gas emissions have gone up, and so we're going to talk to a farmer. And would you have video streamed that boxing match? Hayley, would you have? Definitely not. Yeah, probably would have. I'm Wallace Chapman. I'm Hayley Holt. Welcome to Backbenchers. This is pub politics as it happens. Let's rock and roll. Good to see you, backbenchers. So we are back, 2016, uh, episode three, and, and what a panel tonight. What a great crowd. Thank you so much for coming uh, to the show, and uh, some big topics tonight, so let's get straight into it. A big round of applause, please, for National MP, David Bennett. Right. How are you? Good, mate. Good, good. Uh, Hamilton East MP. Yes. I didn't know Hamilton had an East. Ah, uh, it's got an East and it's a got, West. It's got an East and West. West yeah. What's the sign for East? <laughs> well, well, anything really. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question one. Here's a question. Is it true that tomorrow you'll be rolling out insulation for cars? <laughs> <laughs> you'll just have to wait and see. I'll have to wait and see. All yeah. right. Question two. John Key's popularity has sunk in the poll out yesterday. Are the rumours true that you're next in line? <laughs> no. No. We can squash it right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, question three. Now, this is from a viewer, too, and do um, keep those uh, viewer questions coming in. Sarah asks, apparently Hamilton is the home of naked dining. Have you tried it? No. <laughs> is it the home of naked dining? It's yeah. the home of naked dining. Is Wellington Central the home? <laughs> Look around you. They're all clothed. <laughs> no, I've never heard of it. No. All right. No. Uh, finally, Sarah asks, would you like to? <laughs> 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 Depends what's on the menu, really. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, the contact details are here, so we can maybe talk, yeah. talk about that later. Welcome to the show, David. Uh, look, a big round of applause for uh, Wellington Central MP and wannabe Finance Minister, Grant Robertson. Hey, Grant hey. Wallace. Grant Robertson. It feels like ages since you've been on. It is. It has been a long time. Good to have you on. All right, question one. If you could put someone on a New Zealand banknote, who would it be? Ooh. Well, Kate Shepard's already there. Um, I'd probably put Brendan McCullum. <laughs> oh, right, really? Okay, very cool. All right, John Key's popularity has sunk in the poll out yesterday. When are you taking over from Andrew Little? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Andrew's doing a great job. Going to lead us into the 2017 election and to a win. All right, very good. And finally, caption contest. What is Stephen Joyce thinking? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> uh, there's no housing crisis in here. All right, very good. Uh, and uh, also on the show, we have a uh, uh, finance spokesperson for the Greens, Julie Ann Genta. Julie Ann, good to have you on the show. As always, how are you? Great, how are you? All right, very, very good indeed. All right, favourite Prince song? Oh. God, there's so many. God. Purple Rain? Purple Rain, all right. Okay, moral dilemma. No, no, actually, another viewer question. Emma from 11, 11, Emma 11, age 11, she asks, my dad is a truck driver. Will the Greens get rid of his job? No, no, the Greens, there's still going to be trucks on the road, even if we move more freight by rail and coastal shipping. It's just a question of where the growth's going to come from, whether we want to be filling up our roads with more dangerous trucks. All right, or okay. Or <laughs> All right, they'll be She's okay. Emma, no. hope you understood some of that. Anyway, your dad's <laughs> job sounds <laughs> safe. Uh, and finally, uh, Julianne, uh, caption contest. What is Stephen Joyce thinking? More motorways. <laughs> very excited. More motorways. All right, all right, very good. Um, some big topics tonight. Uh, hey, big round of applause for Haley Holt, who's here on the show tonight. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. Right, How are you? How are you? Very good. What's your favourite Prince song? Um, <laughs> Raspberry Beret, I was going to say, but uh, earlier I did call it Raspberry Corvette, so ah. obviously I'm not a massive fan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, a big week this week in yes, politics? Yes, huge week. A lot of hot air. It's hard to tell uh, what's the truth, what's not, as you will see in tonight's top five. No matter the reality, perception is everything in politics. This week, Andrew Little tried to warn middle New Zealand that all is not what it seems. When you see the budget, Look past the gimmicks. 
look past the spin. Then you look past little. Is that the writing on the wall? We're used to seeing sensitive regions get invaded in the sporting arena. Leg, guys, watch the leg. Yeah. But this week, it was the yoga-loving, sensitive, new-age Canadian Prime Minister who got handsy with the opposition and elbowed a female MP in the chest. The opposition cried foul. I will move that the matter of the physical molestation of the member for Birchie and Maskinage be referred to the Standing Committee on Procedure and House Affairs. Chill out, dude. Meanwhile, in Australia, Immigration Minister Peter Dutton has this charming perception of refugees. Uh, they won't be, uh, uh, you know, numerate or literate in their own language, let alone English. Which is a bit rich, coming from a guy who sends a tweet beginning, I just done. You just done gone called the kettle black, Dutton. While no one thinks our own Prime Minister doesn't care about Kiwis living on the street. All I can say to people is if somebody is homeless, they should go and see working income. It's not hard to draw some unflattering parallels. Oftentimes in politics, perception isn't the reality. But then there are times when we can safely call a spade a deranged loony bird. I don't want to have guns in classrooms, although in some cases teachers should have guns in classrooms, frankly, because teachers are, you know, things that are going on in our schools are unbelievable. You look at some of our schools, unbelievable what's going on. But I'm not advocating guns in classrooms, but remember in some cases, and a lot of people have made this case, teachers should be able to have guns. I'd call him a massive dick, but I think he'd take that as a compliment. So I'm going to leave the last word to Jimmy Fallon. I'm getting a penis reduction surgery, and it's going to be beautiful. Wow, it's amazing. Last uh, last week on the show, we had uh, we had a person from Florida come especially to the to the show all the way. Uh, what did she say? You, you, we're going to get a lot of American refugees. Yeah, she said she was going to move here if Trump ever became president, which is fair enough. But you know, it's a bit scary. So, what do you think, Grant? Twenty seventeen guns in schools here? Yeah, <laughs> Could no. that fly? Yeah, no, not thinking so. David, it might be in the budget tomorrow, right. but uh, certainly not our plan. No. <laughs>